In today's video, we're going to learn how to reduce print colors in Photoshop using Index Color. We're going to take this watercolor floral that has tons of colors in it and reduce it to only 8 colors while keeping it as close to the original as possible. So let's get right into it. One important thing that you need to know is that when you color index, Photoshop will merge the layers in your file and what it'll do is separate your artwork into individual pixels of color instead of individual objects that you have cut out. So you always want to duplicate your file before you color index and you want to color index the copied file. So I'm going to demonstrate on this Photoshop repeat pattern. This is one repeat. And in the original file, I have the flowers and leaves as separate objects that I can move around. But once I implement index color, I won't be able to do that anymore. So just make sure that on repeats that you're happy with the arrangement and then you duplicate your file before you start color indexing. Okay, so the first step will be to go to Image, Duplicate to duplicate the file. You can change the name to say Index at the end and click OK. And we'll keep those two files side by side so that we can compare. Notice that we're starting out with all these individual layers. Now make sure you're on your copied file and go to Image, Mode, Index Color. It'll give you a pop-up message asking you if you want to merge layers. You have to click OK in order to go into Index Color Mode. So click OK. Now the index color dialog box pops up. Next to palette, choose local selective. For colors, that's the number we're gonna play around with the most to get our color reduction. So let's come back to that. Forced, choose none. Keep transparency unchecked. Matte, choose none. And for dither, you want this on diffusion. And you can play around with the amount, but for today's tutorial, we'll just keep it at 75% and we're gonna go back up to color which is what we really want to work with. So the original print is bound to have tons of colors in it. We're starting off with a high number here, and just to see what happens, let's bring it down to a very low number. I'm making sure my preview box is checked and I'm gonna type in three. So at three, it's very faded and not colorful. At four, it has all the main colors, but it's sort of monochromatic in some places, and it doesn't have enough contrast. And at eight, which is our target, it looks like this. It's actually not bad, this could work. But I'm noticing that it's missing that bright lime green color and I really wanted to keep that. And also, the flowers could use a little more contrast. So let's see if we can achieve a better effect. You can work from here and scroll the numbers up and see how far up you need to go to achieve a color effect that's closer to the original. I'm gonna take it up to 12, which I think looks good. And then we'll take the next step in order to reduce the colors down to eight. So I'm clicking OK to 12, and now notice in your layers panel that it did in fact merge all your layers into one layer that says index. You'll also notice that the artwork looks kind of grainy in some places. The reason that it looks like this is that now that Photoshop has reduced a print that had probably over 100 colors in it down to 12 colors, it had to find a way to create these gradations of color or the blending effect without having tons and tons of different shades of colors in it. So if you zoom in close, you can see that Photoshop actually created a stippling effect, or what appears to be little dots or little squares of different colors placed next to each other to create a blending effect. So there are no overlapping colors here. Each one of these squares that you see are an individual pixel using only the 12 colors that we just reduced this print to. The stippling effect looks a little bit harsh right now. But no need to worry about this. This is just how it looks in index mode on your screen. After you finish your whole color reduction, you can go back to RGB mode instead of index color mode and the image will look smooth again and that's actually how it will most likely look when you print it. And if you want to test your print and make sure that it's not really going to print with that graininess, then print out a page of the print in actual size and that'll be a good reflection of more or less what it'll look like on printed fabric. Now there is a chance that you may get some harsh stippling effects in some places. This can happen if you get pixels of colors that contrast too much next to each other. If this happens, then increase the number of colors in the color index box so that Photoshop will have more colors to blend with. So instead of indexing to 12 colors, we would index to a higher number to get rid of any really contrasting grainy parts. And then go on to the next step. But in this case, I'm not seeing anything that stands out to me that much. So let's move on and get into the rest of our color reduction. So now we're gonna go up to Image, Mode, Color Table, and this brings up the Color Table box. 
And here you'll see 12 boxes with the exact colors that are currently in the print. We're going to take a look at these colors to see how we can reduce them. We have 12, we need to be at 8, so we need to reduce our colors by 4. In order to do that, we need to look at three major things. One, what colors look similar to one another and can be combined into one color. Two, what colors are absolutely vital to this print, meaning what colors can you simply not do without. And three, what colors only appear in small areas of the print and can be replaced without it mattering too much. So let's take a look. We can see right here that there are several green colors. Green is a vital color for the leaves of the print, but we probably don't need this many. We probably just need a light, medium, and dark shade of green, so we'll combine some of those. Then I see that we have several pinks, which are definitely vital to the print. But there are four, including this fuchsia, and it's possible that I may only need three. So maybe we'll combine one of those. The lime color, I'm gonna try to keep because I really wanted that in the print. And I see that there are two black colors here. So we only need one, but we're gonna make sure to take a look at where both of those are located so that we can make the right changes. And last, this brownish color here, this one seems less vital to me. So we'll also locate that color in order to see where it is and see what other colors we can replace it with. So that's our game plan to get us down to eight colors. Okay, so let's start with the greens. Make sure you have preview checked during this whole process so you can see the changes that you're making as you're making them. So I'm focusing on the two medium color greens, which are the most similar to one another. And first, I wanna see where they're each located. So I'll click on the first one and the color picker comes up. I'm gonna temporarily choose a very bright contrast color so that I can see where this color is. And when I do that, we can see exactly all the places that that exact color appears on the print so that I can see where it is and how much of it there is on the print. Then I'll cancel that and I'll click on the other medium green and I'll do the same thing. So we can see where this green is on the print and how much of it there is. So in this case, I think I'm gonna change this lighter medium green here to the darker medium green. And I can do that by first selecting the one that I want to change in the color table, then hovering over the other green that I wanna change it to on the artwork. And you'll see that as I hover, the cursor becomes an eyedropper and I can just click on the color that I want to select. And now both color boxes are the same color. So I reduced one color, three more to go. So now let's reduce the pink colors. But real quick, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. Okay, so we're gonna reduce the pinks and I can pretty much clearly see where all four of the pinks are. So I don't necessarily need to put that bright contrasting color on to locate it. So I'm gonna experiment and see which of the two medium pinks I wanna change. So first I'll choose this lighter one, clicking on it in the color table and then hovering over the other medium pink on the artwork and clicking on that to change it. And that's how it'll look if I change the lighter color to the darker color. And then I'm canceling, clicking on the darker medium pink in the color table, hovering over the lighter medium pink in the artwork and clicking on it. And that's how that would look. But I don't think I like how either of those look. So I'm gonna try taking the darker medium pink and changing it to the fuchsia color. And I think I do like that. So I'm gonna stick with that. And now we've got two colors reduced, two more to go. So now let's reduce the black colors. Let's click on one of them and turn on our bright contrast color to see where it's located. And we can see that this black color is the main background color. We definitely need to keep that. But where is this other black color located? Let's click on it, turn on our bright contrast color, and I can kind of see that it's located in just small amounts scattered around the print. But we need to zoom in to see those areas better. Some of this color is located within the dark green color areas. And most of this color is actually around the edges of the main black color background. So we're definitely just gonna change this color to the main black color. And we can do that by hovering over the main background and clicking on the main background to grab that color. So that's three colors reduced, one more to go. And that's this brownish color here. We had identified this before as being a non-vital color that we can replace with something else. But in order to know what color is best to replace this with, we want to make sure that first we know every place that this color is located. So let's click on it and put that contrast color on top of it. 
and we can see that it's basically just in these two areas on the stems of these leaves. So what color will look good in these areas? Let's click on some of the nearby colors to see how they'll look if we use those colors on these areas. So we'll try the medium pink, the light pink, and we can try other colors in the print too, just to see if they might look good there. And we'll just try a few colors out, and I think I like the light pink the best, so we'll choose that one. So now that we've reduced four colors, we should have eight colors in our print now, but let's double check that. Click OK, and now we're gonna change modes for a second. So go up to Image, Mode, RGB. And when you do that, you'll see that in RGB mode, this image really smooths out a lot, which is what I told you would happen after you get out of color index mode. So no need to worry about that graininess. Now once you do that, go right back to Image, Mode, Index Color. And this time, when the Index Color dialog box pops up, here it'll say Exact. And underneath that, it'll tell you the exact amount of colors that are now within your print. And it says eight. That's exactly what we wanted. So click OK, and now it's back in index color. So the graininess is back temporarily. Still, no need to worry. Now I want you to go to image mode color table again. And you'll see that there are only eight color boxes in there now with the exact colors that you chose to keep in your print. Cool, right? So in this case, I was able to keep track of how many colors I had reduced while I was in the first color table. But there are times when you're going to be using the color table to reduce way more than four colors. Sometimes you'll need to reduce 10 or even 20 more colors, which is much harder to keep track of. So if you ever lose track of how many colors you've reduced so far, you can always switch to image mode RGB and then switch right back to image mode index color again which will tell you the exact number of colors you currently have in your print. And then you can go to image mode color table again to keep reducing more colors if you need to. So make sure you save your final file again at the end. And now that your color reduction is done, you can test your repeat by going up to edit, define pattern, which will make this file into a repeat pattern. Then create a new file several times bigger than your repeat size and go to layer, new fill layer, pattern, and select the repeat pattern that you just defined to fill the page with that pattern. And voila! You can see your pattern in repeat with full color reduction. So I hope you like this tutorial, and if you want to keep learning how to make prints like a pro, check out the rest of my print pattern playlist. See you there!